Hello everybody, it's Vinyl Rich here, making another video, Vinyl Finds whatever, it's been three weeks or so since I made one of these, I'd like to thank everybody for watching, except for you, you're not worthy, anyways I'm, I want to, I'm going to ask everybody that's watching this to subscribe to a channel, I'm going to leave a link in my comments, it's Burps from the Swamp. It's Garner's new channel. He hasn't made a video yet, but please uh, subscribe to him. Uh, I think it would mean a lot to him. Now, last week, I made an Alien Sex Fiend video. And I made it kind of late Saturday. And after we ma I made the video, we went to the movies. We go see The Late Show. And I must admit, I was feeling pretty good about myself. Because I, I felt like I nailed it, you know. I... I thought the information was good and it flowed well. And I uploaded it. We went to the movies. And uh, we got to the movies kind of early. And there was a bar like just down, like, down the street, like a few businesses away. And I suggested, hey, uh, let's go into the bar. You know, we're early. They have good margaritas there. Now, I didn't know if they had good margaritas or not. I was taking a chance I, I figured my odds were pretty good so we went in there we sat down at the bar went into the bar the other end of the bar there's this guy and he yells hey ass give me another beer and i'm thinking man what kind of bar are we in you know so the bartender gets a beer and he takes it to the guy then the bartender comes over to us and i ask him i go hey why is that guy calling you ass the bartender says, yeah, yeah, always calls me that. I go, oh, okay. We ordered our margaritas. Went and saw the movie. Good movie. And uh, I got home. After the movie, we got home. I didn't watch the video. Now, see, I normally watch my videos before I upload them. In case there's something, you know, I don't like. I watched it the next uh, morning. And I must say, I was kind of disappointed. I think the content of the video was good, but the albums weren't in really clear focus. If you compare it to like the video, uh, my vinyl finds, not my vinyl finds, but my vinyl collection of the 45 Gray video, those album covers, man, the, they, they were so crisp. And this one, it was a little blurry. And I was, I was thinking of deleting it. But by that time, 200 people had watched it and it, a lot of people made comments, so I didn't. And, uh, I don't know, it's, maybe I'll redo it one day, but anyways, I got four records here, four, I mean, eight records here, four used, four new, and we're going to get started with this one here, Electric Mud by Muddy Waters. This is actually the first Muddy Waters album I ever owned, probably got it in 1970. Um, and I, it was one of these issues, the white cover one. I made a trade with my cousin Mark, I mean my cousin Guy. And uh, I remember I traded him uh, the third Buffalo Springfield album. I didn't really like that album. I still don't think it's that great. But uh, yeah, I, I dug this album. And it's still one of my favorite Muddy Waters albums. It's... The jet or the blues purists don't care for it, but that's fine. Um, after uh, this one, I bought Folk Singer and the Muddy Waters Blues in the Brass. And uh, I was kind of disappointed with both of those. I was expecting this, you know, the psychedelic hard. And those two albums did not deliver that. I really like the folk singer one now, but this is a great album. I love this album. Great gatefold. Electric Mud. If you haven't heard this, check it out. It's on Cadet Concept. Came out in 1968. I, I think it's a fabulous album. It's not a traditional blues and a lot of people gave Muddy Waters a lot of flack, calling him a sellout, this, that, and the other. And the same can be said for this next one. 
with R.L. Burnside. Come on in. This has some sampling. I think Cedric Burnside, the drummer, does some sampling. and It's got some other stuff uh, that's just straight up blues. But a lot of it's treated in a... So this is criticized too, you know, for not being traditional blues. But it's like, what do you expect these guys to do? You know, just make the same record over and over. There's not enough blues purists out there for a guy like this to earn a decent living. So, you know, what do you expect him to do? I don't get it. But anyways, Rolling and Tumbling remix. That's the very first R.L. Burnside song I ever heard in my life. It was, I was driving home from work. And it was on a Saturday afternoon, and K-Rock was playing it, K-R-O-Q. It might have been a Friday, and uh, they played that song. And I go, man, that is cool. I, it just had a really distinct, really modern sound to it. And uh, I bought the CD. Well, the record store in Whittier right here had it. I picked it up. And uh, I, I, I really dig this album. It's not my favorite, but I, I like it. It's uh, Cool Labels with Cedric right there on the cover. Now this next one is one that uh, Flipside CT showed. And it's Lou Reed, Live in New York, 1972. Now I have four Lou Reed live albums. And all four of them sound completely different. This one here, if you like uh, Transformer, you're going to like this album. It sounds, it has that error sound to it. Fantastic album. The quality is great. <coughs> the song selection is great. It's, I was really blown away by this. It's, uh, I mean, I picked it up, for, I think, for 17 bucks online. And, uh, yeah, it's really good. It's with some band, some young guys. I don't remember. The Tots, maybe, or something like that. He used for a backup band for, I guess, a couple of years. You know, really cool. Um, the Rock and Roll Animal one was, the, I think it came out maybe a year or two after this. And it's real flamboyant. I, I love that album, too. But this is not like that. This sounds more like a Walk on the Wild Side. That... Uh, Transformer album. But I highly recommend this. Great sound quality. And very cool custom labels. The other new one I got is a record that uh, I think we all know. Well, the Psy Kids know. And uh, Vinyl Fuzz showed it. It's a new reissue of 50 Foot Hose, their first album. And it's. This is a, a fantastic psych album. Probably in my top 20, I guess. I, I don't know. It's hard to say. But uh, it's got some synthesizers. Kind of experimental. Really cool album. And uh, it's a new reissue on this yellow, blue, and red vinyl. Clear, translucent. It looks like pish yellow probably on the camera. I'm not sure. But it's got some different swirl and colors in there. And it came with this little insert. 50 foot holes. A flood of sound. Cauldron, I believe, is the name of this, huh? I didn't say. Yeah, Cauldron. But yeah, this one was a little more expensive. But I, I, I highly recommend it. Really good uh, male female vocals. Really good uh, that deep trippy psychedelic is what what the stuff I really like. Highly recommend this one. Now my fourth and I think my final really, yeah this is my final new record and this is Mind Force. The name of the album is Excalibur and uh, this is on Triple B Records. This is actually a second press. The first press sold out, 
and now those are selling. The cheapest I've seen one is $65. So I got on the, the waiting list on Triple B and they, they said they would notify me if something came available and I guess enough people did that so they printed up 500. They said the second and final press of this album. It's a hardcore punk band. Um, I believe they're from New York. I mean, I'm not really up on that. But I'm pretty sure they're, yeah, they're from Long Island, it looks like. Um, really, uh, really great musicianship. I, the singer is excellent. It's got some of that, uh, guitars that, uh, kind of heavy metal-ish that, noodling guitars in some of the songs which is something i'm not a great big fan of really cool vinyl and uh yeah I, I think people that like heavy metal would like this one it's fantastic actually and uh there's some live videos of this band live and they're fantastic but yeah i i recommend this check them out online uh Mind Force. I might leave a, a link to their live video. The first couple of songs on the video, you can't hear the guitars, but you know, give it uh, like four or five minutes and then it, the guitars are cranked in on the video and it's really good. I mean, the first two songs kind of sound like Limp Biscuit or something, man, with a real heavy bass or Primus. Now on, I got three more. I showed that one used. This is my second used one. It's the Who's second album, U.S., Happy Jack. I really like this album. I have all of the Who's 60s albums now, except for their first, My Generation. My Generation has some great songs on it, but I'm not a big fan of all the covers on it. I mean, them doing James Brown, and I don't know. It, for me, I'll probably get it if I, when I find a good copy. This is a stereo version, I believe, yeah. And that's fine with me. I, Happy Jack, I don't think a lot of Who people care for that uh, song, but it's one of my favorites, to be quite honest. I always liked it when I was a kid, and I still do. Starts off with Run, Run, Run. I, I really dig this album. I like this one and the Who Sell Out. I think those are... I like the one on tour also. This is the original sleeve. And it's on Deco. The next live one is Otis Redding, The Dock of the Bay. This is my fourth Otis Redding album. This is the one that came out right after he passed away. The one he was working on. And a great album. <coughs> his biggest, I mean, I think his first number one U.S. Billboard song and it's a shame you know the way things went down but yeah great everything he does is great i mean i don't know how many more otis redding albums i really need i have four they're all good but if i find one i guess i'll get it i mean i'm not gonna i mean i'll keep buying them until i hear a, run across a bad one and it's on volt records very cool the last one, I'm running through this pretty quickly. It's the Beach Boys, Surfing USA. It's a big ass cutout here. Um, I remember Beach Boy albums being on in the cutout bins at uh, Kmart. And I bought, a, the one I picked up was the Beach Boys Greatest Hits Volume 2 and I still have it. It's in great shape because I didn't play it that often and I was kind of disappointed with it. But I look at the song track listening now it's got Barbara Ann uh, help me Rhonda it's got some good songs but this one kind of has a special place in my heart this is actually the first Beach Boys album that I ever heard and I heard it at uh, Mike Gifford's house he actually lived uh, two houses away there was one house in between his house and our house and he is the Mike Gifford was the nephew of Frank Gifford 
the football player. Frank Gifford played at uh, Bakersfield Junior College. He ended up playing pros at, uh, for the New York Giants. And I believe he was on Monday Night Football for like 28 years with uh, Dandy Dan, uh, Dandy Don, and uh, Howard Cosell. But uh, yeah, I. this is the first US, uh, Beach Boys album I ever heard. The number one surfing group of, in the country. And uh, I had heard their, you know, some of their songs on the radio, but we were at his house, and I don't know if it was his older sister was playing this, and it had uh, vocal songs and instrumental songs, and I just really, it just really, kind of blew me away, you know. Look how young they are right there. I hope this uh, coming in focus. If not, I'm not gonna upload it. But anyway, that's it. It's on the Capitol. Thanks for watching. Please uh, subscribe to Garner. And uh, I'll leave a link to that. Take care, everybody. Take care, guys and gals. Bikers and skinheads.